So welcome back for day 26 of the Wonder Wife Workshop. I'm Nikki Friedman. So we recently began our discussion of how to relate to our in-laws and we started talking about the impact that that could have on our marriage and our relationship with our husbands. So last time we spoke about specifically the mother-in-law, daughter-in-law relationship and we looked at an example involving a newlywed daughter-in-law and her mother-in-law that went furniture shopping. And in that situation, the takeaway message was that the mother-in-law was really being objectively kind and nice to the daughter-in-law, but the daughter-in-law had her own insecurities that were blinding her from seeing the objective reality, and as a result, interpreted her mother-in-law's words as being attacking or um, passive-aggressive and not really um, approving of her, and it was really false. So what I want to talk about today is the flip side of that. What if your mother-in-law, and once again, I'm just using mother-in-law, daughter-in-law here as um, an example since that is a common sort of clashing, but really these situations could apply to sister-in-laws, to brother-in-laws, to grandmothers, right? It could apply to anyone um, of our husband's side or our husband relating to our side. So let's say in that same kind of situation with the mother-in-law, daughter-in-law. So the mother-in-law comes to visit the daughter-in-law's home and is nitpicking everything that she does. Has to have a comment about the way that she spices her chicken, the way that she dresses her children, the way that she keeps her home, little things around the house that need to be repaired and aren't up to par according to her mother-in-law's standards. Now the way that this situation is gonna be dealt with is going to depend on how often this is happening. So if a daughter-in-law is having her, let's call her critical mother-in-law visiting, you know, once or twice a year for the weekend, my advice would be just deal with it, okay? We're talking about one weekend here. Let her say what she wants. Don't take it personally and just like try your best to please her. <laughs> that would be my advice. But for some people, their mother-in-law lives in their house with them or close by within the same city or has the luxury of you know being in another city but visiting many times a year right so that is a different situation so if a person is dealing with whether a mother-in-law sister-in-law grandparent whatever it is okay somebody coming who is regularly criticizing them the first thing i would say is to make sure to establish healthy boundaries and open communication. We've been speaking a lot in this class about how to speak in a kind and gentle way, just like the rules with how to speak with our husband, the same rules apply with how to speak with, let's call it our mother-in-law, okay? So that means finding the right moment when the person is able to hear you, if they are able to hear you um, and internalize what it is that you have to say, saying it in a loving way, right? So let's say it's a mother-in-law, let's say not even visiting, let's just say the mother-in-law um, calls all the time and gets upset when you don't answer the phone and don't call back immediately and gets like nervous and leaves messages and messages saying, is everything okay? Just checking in, haven't heard from you guys for a while. And the daughter-in-law is like, okay, I think this is a little bit excessive. So what I would say is that this daughter-in-law could speak to the mother-in-law and say, Thank you so much for your calls. You know, I always love hearing with you and hearing from you and having a chance to catch up with you. I don't want you to be worried if I don't call back right away. You know, things are just really busy around here, you know, with my job or with the kids or whatever it may be. So you can leave a message and you don't have to worry. I'll get back to you. Or another way would say, you know, I'm so glad that you're calling. Let's try to set a set time so that I can make sure to be available during that time. Maybe let's say once a week before Shabbos starts, where we can definitely know that we're both available during that time to be able to speak. So once again, being firm, making clear the boundary, but at the same time doing it in a loving, appreciative way. So that's the first point that I wanna make. The next point is to be able to get to the place where we can try to see things from their perspective. So obviously, you know, that is very, difficult, especially if you're dealing with somebody who you feel is being irrational or unreasonable and cr critiquing you all the time. In my example that I gave yesterday in my own personal life, I gave an example where I felt as though I was being rigid in a certain situation 
And I had this aha moment where I was able to empathize with somebody else in my life who I felt was being unreasonably rigid. But I realized that, you know what, maybe although I felt all this time as though I can't relate to that person, maybe I actually can. Maybe there's part of me who has that in me, right? So same sort of thing here, okay? It's possible that there's some part of our, let's say, mother-in-law's personality that may be irking us or bothering us that maybe I can say, oh my gosh, now I know what it feels like to be criticized. I'm not going to do that to my husband, right? We were speaking a lot about that, about the wife who like criticizes and controls and is trying to tell her husband what to do. So sometimes when we experience that from our in-laws, we have that aha moment of, wow, this is what it feels like to have somebody telling me that I'm doing things wrong all the time. That's a really bad feeling. And instead of getting annoyed with our in-laws about it, once again, we can be firm, we can put boundaries in place, and they may not want to hear it, and that's okay. But we can also learn from that lesson in terms of our own behavior on how to treat other people, specifically our husbands. Okay, I'm going to leave it at that for now, and I'm going to continue with this tomorrow along these same lines. Thanks so much.